Hello, my wonderful students. I hope you are doing well. You're welcome to basic science class. And today we'll be discussing the Zs. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to, number one, define the Zs. Two, mention the major types of diseases. Three, state correctly the modes of disease transfer. And the fourth one, you should be able to state the consequences and prevention of disease contraction. Number one, what is disease? Disease is any deviation from the normal state of health of an organism. I repeat, disease is any deviation from the normal state of health of an organism, or we can say that disease is any change in the body other than injury that causes any part of the body not to work properly. There are some organisms that are microscopic in nature. We call them microorganisms that causes these diseases, and they are called disease-causative organisms. Examples of these disease causative organisms are one, bacteria. We have several types of bacteria. You can see them in the picture. One, you have the one we call Streptococcus pneumoniae. You have Staphylococcus aureus, Clostridium tetanium, and so on and so forth. All these bacteria has particular disease they can cause. Then number two is virus. From the structure here, you can see a structure of virus. I believe everyone knows this structure because whenever you open or tune your television, you always see this. It is a structure of what? That's wonderful. Corona virus. Number two, you have the fungi. Fungi is another causative organism. You can see an example of fungi there is a mushroom. Number three is protozoa. I mean number four, protozoa. An example of protozoa is plasmodium. This plasmodium is carried by a mosquito. And then when mosquito bites human being, it transmits this microorganism, plasmodium, which causes malaria. Okay. Now, we have two major types of diseases. We have a lot of diseases, but these diseases, we group them into two types. One is infectious or communicable diseases. One is what? Infectious or communicable diseases. Number two, non-infectious or non-communicable diseases. Repeat after me non-infectious or non-communicable diseases. Now, what is infectious or communicable disease? Communicable diseases are diseases which can be passed from one person to another or from other animals called vectors to man. Now, what is this vector? Vectors are those small, small animals that carry disease-causing microorganisms like mosquito. Mosquito is a vector. It carries plasmodium, which I told you earlier on is a causative organism. That is the organism that causes malaria. Mosquito carries this and transmits it to man and thereby transferring malaria parasite. Okay, so communicable diseases are those diseases which can be passed from one person to another or from other animals called vectors to man. Examples of communicable diseases include, one is cholera, dysentery, malaria, cold and cough, chickenpox, measles. All these are examples of communicable diseases. Even this coronavirus, you can believe or you can agree with me that it's a communicable disease. Why do you say it's a communicable disease? Yes? Good, because when you stay close with someone, 
who has this disease, coronavirus, the person can easily transmit it to you. Okay. The second one is non-communicable diseases. The second one is what? Non-communicable diseases. What is non-communicable diseases? Non-communicable diseases are diseases that are not passed from one person to another. They are mostly caused by malfunctioning of the body parts or genetic disorder or even by allergy. Maybe someone is allergic to a particular thing. Okay. So these are the causes of these non-communicable diseases. Examples of non-communicable disease are Number one, you have diabetes mellitus. This mostly is caused by too much sugar in the blood cell. Number two is asthma, which is a respiratory tract infection. Headache, heart disease, rheumatoid, arthritis, obesity. You can see obesity is non-communicable. You can agree with me. Now, when someone eats excessively and the person becomes too big, you can say that the person is what? Obese. So you can notice that that person cannot transfer that obesity to another person. Therefore, obesity is a non-communicable disease. Okay. Now, what are the modes of the disease transfer? How can these diseases be transferred? One, by eating contaminated food. When someone eats food that are contaminated, maybe by housefly, and you eat it, it can lead to things like dysentery. Okay. The second one, drinking contaminated water. Water that are dirty, water that are uh, not pure. When you drink it, it can lead to disease. Droplet infection, like coronavirus. You know, in this, in this period of pandemic, if you stay around someone and the person mistakenly sneezes around you, you say, Ete! you notice that the droplets, if it for, if the person has that coronavirus, if it falls on any surface and you touches it, you definitely contract coronavirus. So droplet infection has to do with all that, that, those droplets that fall because of maybe the sneezing or the coughing and is, it drops in the air and you, someone con touches or contrasts it, it causes disease. Body contact with infected person. For instance, if someone is having something like chicken pox or measles and you have body contact with such a person, it can act actually be con uh, transferred to you. Then infection by disease vector. Like I've said earlier on, Disease vectors are small animals that carry causative organisms and they transmit it to man. Example I've mentioned is female anephalus mosquito. Another one is sesafly, fly, even black fly, and so on. Now, what are the consequences of disease contraction? If someone contracts this disease, what will be the effects? Number one, it increases poverty level in the society. You can agree with me now that the poverty level in our society has increased so tremendously because of coronavirus. A lot of people don't have what to do because of this disease. So once there is disease outbreak or once someone is suffering a particular disease, it can lead to poverty. Another one, it reduces the population of the society. Like what we are facing now, about 400 and something thousand people are dead because of coronavirus. Now you can see that this has reduced the population of our society. Number three, loss of family members. A lot of family as well has lost their family members because of this pandemic. Okay. Then create unhealthy atmosphere in the family. If someone is sick, for instance, if someone has this coronavirus in a particular family, you notice that such a person will be quarantined, meaning the person will be kept in a separate room. And you notice that the relationship with such a person will not be as it used to be. 
so that the person don't infect the whole family. So it creates unhealthy atmosphere in the family. It reduces daily life activity. They always say that wealth is health. If you are healthy, you can acquire wealth. But when you are not healthy, it will be very difficult for you to work. And when you don't work, you will not be able to get money. So it reduces your daily activities in the sense that because someone is sick, the person may not be able to put in his or her best. Okay, how then do we prevent this disease? These diseases can be prevented by one, sanitation. Sanitation has to do with general cleanliness of our environment. Two, personal cleanliness. This one has to do with your personal hygiene. Your proper taking care of yourself. Number three, education. That has to do with educating the, the public, educating the society about a particular disease. Just like this coronavirus. Whenever you tune the, your television or even the radio, you see people talking about it, educating us, telling us things that can cause this coronavirus, how people can contract it, and how we can avoid it. So that's actually what we mean by educating education as a means of preventing disease. Then immunization. Immunization has to do with introducing a vaccine in someone's body in order to boost the person's immune system. And this immune system is a system of our body that helps the body to fight against diseases. So immunization is another way we can prevent diseases, okay? Like when a child is giving birth, you notice that such a, such a child is taken to the hospital for immunization in order to prevent some diseases. Control of disease vectors, like things like mosquitoes, we can control them by uh, getting rid of stagnant water, clearing our gutters and the bushes around our environment. Then purification of water. It is advisable we purify our water before drinking it. You can purify our water by boiling. Okay. I believe you understood this topic now. Diseases. We started by defining disease. Then we mentioned the causative organisms. We also mentioned the two major types of diseases and we gave their examples. Then we talked about ways these diseases can be contracted and how we can prevent them. Okay, having paid attention to this class, I want you to try this. Number one, define the term disease. Number two, mention two types of diseases. Three, state three modes of disease transfer. Then the last one highlights three consequences and three modes of disease prevention. Thank you and God bless you. Stay safe.